Hello sewing people of the internet. Uh, this is going to be the third video in the unexpected controversial saga of this pair of shears that I bought uh, on a whim at the sewing expo in Lakeland, Florida a couple weeks ago. So uh, in case you didn't see the other two videos or again there's maybe a possibility I might end up taking them down um, as this story develops. Uh, so let me just recap what happened here. Uh, I was at a sewing expo. I saw these shears. They were interesting to me. There were some what I kind of considered red flags about them. Um, there was a claim that they were made in France, but there's no markings to indicate where they're made. The packaging seemed really generic, and I wasn't really sure about them, but they felt and cut really, really nicely. And even though they were the most expensive shears I've ever bought, uh, I went ahead and purchased them. And because this is, you know, part of my whole thing about this channel is introducing people to things that maybe they don't know about, uh, I did a video unboxing them and just kind of a brief introduction. And in the comments to that video, a lot of people told me that they had found identical looking scissors for much, much lower prices on Amazon and eBay and other places like that. That led me down a rabbit hole and I ended up buying an identical looking pair of shears on Amazon for $13. So I paid, I paid $60 plus or minus for these. They list on the company's website for $85, $84.95. I bought these for $13.95 and they included a couple of cheap seam rippers and a pair of thread snips and an X-Acto knife and a measuring tape or, you know, fabric measuring tape. At a casual observation level, they seem identical, but a closer inspection did reveal some difference, although these feel virtually the same and cut just as well, like exactly as well. So yesterday I unboxed and reviewed the cheap scissors, filmed a video and published that video. In the comments to that video, a commenter, and I'm not gonna name you a commenter just in case you don't want me to, but it can be found in the comments and I really appreciate you making this very helpful comment. I, I should have thought of this myself and I'm sad that I didn't, uh, but the commenter suggested, hey, why don't you reach out to the company and ask them why they charge so much. You know, they've got a phone number on their website and stuff. And my answer to him, and, th and this is true, I'm, I'm not an investigative journalist. I'm a dude with a YouTube channel that's primarily oriented at sewing. Um, and uh, I'm not trying to make it my life's work to uh, find good or bad deals uh, and, and reveal uh, the hidden underpinnings of manufacturing and selling of items. Uh, all that kind of stuff is kind of beyond the scope of what I'm trying to do here and what I can do. But it raised a, a good point, you know, at least I could reach out and, and give the company an opportunity to explain themselves. So, so I sent an email through their uh, contact us section on the website uh, and explained in detail what my concerns were and provided a link to the video and said, if you want to check it out and, you know, give me some feedback, tell me if I'm wrong, please do. So Friday morning, I unbox these scissors, film it, make a video, publish the video. By Friday afternoon, I got an email from Joe Vecarelli, the owner of French European, uh, asking me to call and have a conversation with him. So basically in one day, I went from finding out that I could get much cheaper shears to having a conversation with the owner of the company of the more expensive shears. And that's the point of this video. I first wanna clarify that, again, I am not an expert on any of this stuff. I didn't know these scissors existed. I didn't need them. I just kind of put out some of my other shears on the table just to illustrate the point. I've got way more than this at home. I don't need them. By the way, Joe Vecarelli, if you happen to watch, here's my Heinish shears that we spoke about. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't have any affiliation with French European. We had a maybe 10 or 15 minute phone conversation. I am sharing my opinions and what Joe told me on the phone, and he, he was very uh, explicit that I could share what we talked about on a video. Um, so I'm just sharing this to provide some more clarity to the situation. I wanna say right up front, although I'm several minutes into a video now, but right up front, in the second video of this series, I said that I felt like I was ripped off by buying these shears. I no longer feel that way. It would be impossible for me to argue with someone who says, hey, these cut just as well and they're a lot cheaper. 
I agree. Uh, whether or not they will last or uh, work just as well for any length of time is a question I do not know. But an argument has been put forth to me by Joe that these are better, have better quality control, and he provided some reasons why that I'll get into in a minute. Um, and those arguments make sense to me. Nothing about my conversation with him made it apparent to me that he was intentionally misleading or uh, exaggerating any claims. I, you know, again, I talked to him for 10 or 15 minutes. I don't know the guy at all, but he seemed like an honest person who took time out of his day on a moment's notice to have a conversation with some YouTuber who was talking about his scissors. So uh, that speaks volumes to me that he wanted to get in touch and, and at least uh, share some information with me. Uh, I'm not going to go into the, uh, the whole history of French European or Joe Vaccarelli, um, but uh, my understanding now is that he has a uh, long family history in scissor manufacturing. Um, so as I understand it, these shears are manufactured in China, as I think we all probably would have easily guessed. Um, he tells me that they are made of 440C steel, which... Uh, to my understanding, having looked at it independently, is a good choice for scissors. Um, and one of the important things that we talked about was that in in the second video in this series when I compared these two, I noted that on the inexpensive pair from Amazon, there was a pretty sizable gap between the blades at the pivot bolt. Joe explained to me that part of their manufacturing process is after they are after the blades are hollow ground, they are leveled on a leveling block to make sure that that seam doesn't have a gap. So, and I guess the idea is that that gap eventually, as the scissors wear, can cause the blades to push against each other and then not cut as well or something. I, again, I'm not an expert on this stuff. I don't have any idea, but uh, it seems reasonable that that gap could cause problems, and I expressed concerns about it in the second video, if you want to take a look at that. In that video, I also noted that there were some subtle differences in the bevel on the pivot bolt between the inexpensive pair and the French European pair. Uh, and Joe pointed out that that is a, another indication that they're not manufactured the same. For some reason, there's a different component being used or something. I think the implication is that these are not made in the same place uh, and that they're you know, both scissors of the same design specification, but one is made better than the other. I mentioned it in a previous video, but that sounds familiar, doesn't it? It's you know, kind of the sale right thing all over again, maybe slightly different. But um, So Joe also told me that these scissors, although it's not indicated anywhere that I could see on their website, and I saw nothing on the packaging to indicate it, he says that French European scissors are guaranteed for life. Uh, and he did indicate that they're working on updating their packaging and including additional information, including that warranty information um, that is just, it's not present now for some reason. Um, I kind of feel like maybe they do most of their sales in person at like the expo that I purchase from uh, and events like that. So maybe it uh, is communicated better in that form. I don't remember being told that. And it, honestly, the person who sold to me could have told me that and I just didn't pay any attention. Um, but these are, according to Joe Vecarelli, guaranteed for life. I don't have any idea if these are or not, but... And uh, just another thing I want to point out, uh, Joe offered to send me a couple of more pairs of these, the idea being that he wanted me to see that... We, I, I made a statement that I don't know if I opened a, you know, a whole bunch of these if some would have a nice flush joint and some would have a gap like these inexpensive ones did, and, and he wanted me to know that, no, they will all be like this. And he offered to send me a couple of pairs to illustrate that, I, I declined to accept them for a couple of reasons. One, any critical person looking at this could say, oh, well, he, you know, he handpicked some nice ones to send you, so you would think that they're all nice, but that doesn't mean anything. That's a valid concern. And also, I don't want anyone to think that I'm now changing my opinion about this again because he sent me some free shears. Again, I do not need any more shears. Frankly, if, if 
he were to send me some, I would just give them away. But even then, it's still, you know, something I'm kind of gaining a benefit from, and I don't want to muddy the waters any on this. So very kind of him to offer that, though, and I, I believe he offered that in uh, with the best of intentions. I don't think he was trying to make me speak highly of his scissors by giving me more scissors that I don't need. So, All right, so I guess the main point of this is just to say that I think these scissors, I still, I said from the beginning, these things cut amazing, they feel really great, and I genuinely like them. These feel really great and cut really great. I am, and I'm not just saying this because of the conversation, I mentioned it in the second video, I am a little concerned about that pivot point and how, how much more slop there is than this. A little bit of movement there and kind of a lot of movement there. So, you know, I definitely detect a difference between these two, and those differences are, you know, this one shows signs of being worse than this one. Is it uh, worth paying four times as much for this one? You have to decide that. Uh, I am a big fan of paying for quality, and if that quality can be demonstrated, um, I'm happy to pay for it if, you know, I can afford it and it's worth it to me. So, uh, I would say if you are looking for a pair of shears like this, and if you value having a little bit more quality control, or maybe a lot more quality control, accountability, a lifetime guarantee, um, being able to at least know who the company is, because I don't even know what company this is, uh, other than I just bought it from Amazon. I mean, there was a seller listed on Amazon, but it was some combination of letters that don't make sense in English anyway. Um, Maybe there's a point to buying something like this, the French European shears. Uh, I'm going to continue to use them. I said this before, it's going to be a long, long time before I can put significant use into these that might reveal some difference that happens over years of use. But um, I definitely no longer feel like these are a ripoff. Uh, I think they are definitely a premium priced product. And it has at least been demonstrated to me that there is justification for that premium price. Whether you agree with that justification or not is a completely different story, but I definitely feel differently about these now that I talked to uh, Mr. Vecarelli. Uh, and if nothing else, it speaks volumes that the owner of the company, upon learning that this controversy is happening, even on, uh, he was very complimentary when I, he spoke about the fact that I referred to my channel as being small, which it is, and, and he, dismiss that and said it's important no matter how small a channel is is talking about our product we want to you know make sure that the, um, the accurate information is being uh, made available uh, i'm i'm not he didn't say that exactly i'm paraphrasing our conversation but um anyway it speaks volumes to me that he was willing to have a conversation with me um so thank you mr Vecarelli, and uh yeah, if, if you are considering these shears, I would say definitely consider the quality versus the cost, and you can make your judgment based on, you know, kind of that full picture, not just that something that looks exactly the same is available. I'm going to go way out into uncharted waters here and speculate wildly. Um, I've, I've talked about this scenario before. I'm not saying this exact thing is what's happening here, but I would say that it's very possible that this kind of thing is at least part of why you get this kind of a situation on the marketplace. You can imagine a scenario where the company, the factory in China is manufacturing these and they manufacture some that when they inspect them, they find, oh, this has got a big gap, and French European won't accept that. It doesn't meet their quality requirements. Let's put this in this bin, and this bin goes to Amazon for $13.95 under some other manufacturer's name, and this one goes into this bin, it goes to French European, right? Um, I've, I've seen that firsthand happen uh, in manufacturing, and I, again, I don't know if that is what happens, uh, but I could certainly see it. I could certainly see a, hey, we got a batch of uh, steel that turns out it's not uh, 440C. It's some other alloy that is not what 
French European has specified. So let's make another run of these shears and sell them on Amazon for $13.95 or whatever, however it gets distributed. Again, I'm not saying that's what happens. I'm saying that it seems like that could happen because this is a pretty simple thing and, uh, you know, there's not a lot to it. I don't think there's anything about this that could be patentable at this point. Um, so... Again, I, I don't know if that's what's happening, but you know there could be a real reason why these cost more than these beyond just this has a particular name on it and this doesn't. So these are just things for you to consider. Um, as I've said many times with the Sailrite versus the generic walking foot machines, portable walking foot machines, we all have a budget that you know we have to live by. And if your budget dictates that you need to buy $13 scissors, these cut really well, uh, for sure. Um, I have no idea if they, they may cut really well for a thousand years. I really don't know. But at least there is some reason to consider spending a little bit more, or a lot more, and getting something with a little bit more um, accountability to it. I sincerely hope that <laughs> this is the last video on uh, this topic, at least for a while. Uh, it's funny, I, I was not looking to embroil myself into uh, the controversy of sewing shears, um, but uh, it is pretty interesting that, uh, you know, literally like a week after learning of the existence of these shears, I end up in a conversation with the owner of the company over it. It's a funny world we live in today, I guess, but um, if you have questions or comments, please post them below, you know, the whole deal. And I really appreciate uh, all the thoughtful comments that I've had on this. Uh, some people have had some very good suggestions uh, about how to test the steel and stuff like that. I'm probably not going to be doing any of that, but, um, you know, maybe somebody else can. But And at some point, I'm going to get back to sewing something. So. Anyway, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit the like button, uh, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.